Welcome back to the channel, it's Chris from L3D and today we have another tutorial for Xtool Studio. You've probably heard people mention layers in the past and how they can be really useful, but you might not be sure how to use them in Xtool Studio. Well, this tutorial today is me explaining the layer system to you, how it can be useful to you and exactly where you can put it into your workflow. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and we'll get straight to it. We're on our Xtool Studio workspace, so we're gonna click the top right on new project. So we're gonna be going through layers today, and there are a number of reasons layers are really valuable. One is just from an organizational aspect. You can assign certain groups of items to a certain layer, which then allows you to bulk edit them at once instead of individually selecting them. The other option is you can use layers to determine what order something is engraved, where that could be useful to you. Another useful aspect of it is just to organize everything to make it look simpler to you to visually look at. We're gonna go through all the different useful aspects of layers today, and hopefully you'll get a good idea of where you can implement it into your workspace. The first thing we will do is we will put some elements into our design, and the reason for this is I just wanna be able to give you good examples of where layers are useful to us. So. These are elements just from Xtools um, elements library and you might have um, a coaster or something that you want to make your own Christmas um, your own Christmas decoration on and you're using these and you'll see initially mine are coming blue they usually come in black and that the color of what you're looking at represents the layer that it is and at the moment they're all the same layer. So we could we can individually select these items and adjust the parameters. I've got pine wood selected here. You can go into one set. So that's one way that you would you would probably normally be adjusting these. You might be manually going in and doing each of them. Well, let's say that you want them all to engrave exactly the same way and you want to be able to change it really quickly. Well, what you can do, because they are all on the same layer, if you look to the bottom left here, you'll see a dot a blue dot, which is the same as the color they are. You click on that, it selects all of them as a layered group, okay? And what we can then do is if you look to the right again, currently it's saying mixed power because they all have their own individual ones. But if we want to control them and get them all to engrave the same way in one quick foul swoop, we click one click set in this case I'm gonna do and just select it. And now they all have identical engraving settings i can adjust the speed to 3600 i'm now going to select each one and you'll see that's got that setting click that one it's got that setting excellent you can also still go in and individually adjust them so that they do have individual settings but for me that gets confusing and this is where this is so beneficial because you can select it as a layer and then adjust it as a layer and you're good to go that is our first use for layers bulk editing of settings for items. But there are more, more things we can do and more ways we can do it. And the reason for that is you might not always want things to be the same settings. And if that's the case, what you can do then is assign them individual layers. So if we right click on the bell here and select red, you'll see at the bottom left now, you now have two colors, but let's expand on that a little bit further. And if you go to the bottom left of Xtool Studio, you will see what are a load of, they look like stacked sheets of paper. If you select that, that is the layer and object list. And what that does is it gives us a demonstration of the layers we have in our workspace. Now, the way we can use this to our advantage is we can give each item its own layer. And let me show you here. And they all are selectable quickly. And as I showed you at the start of this, that's really good if you have multiple items. But it might be that, let's say you're working on stainless steel and you want each of these to come out a slightly different color. Well, you can assign each image a different layer, go in there, adjust it to your heart's content. I know I'm dealing with wood, but I'm just demonstrating. You can go in there and quickly set it to what you need it to be. So it might be that you've actually got a red stainless steel color. Well, you can select it red just so it visually looks like it. That's one benefit. But two, you can assign the parameters and make sure it comes out the right way. And that's a quick way of being able to do that. The other benefit of this is if you are engraving on wood, like I like to do, there is a really nice trick where you can engrave onto wood and then score a line around the outside of the engraving to really add some contrast. And in my previous tutorials, which you can see on my channel, I did it in two separate passes. I engraved the item, I then selected it, 
changed it to score like that and then I engraved, I then processed the score on top of it. Well, that's great, but that's two processes. We can limit that time down into one process by using layers and I'll show you how to do that. If I delete these ones, I'll drag this into the middle of our workspace and set it to go central. And I will set it to engrave initially and I'm gonna copy and paste that design, okay? And I'm gonna select score. So it's confusing. If I put that over the center of that now, you're not even gonna see what it is. So what I can do is while I've got it selected, I'll change it to green and then I will put it over the top. And if we zoom in, you can see our green outline and our red outline. We have two layers now on, we have two individual vector images on two separate layers. And you'll see they are in an order of green first, which is score, or in this case, it could be score. And the red is the engraved. You might not want it to do it in that order, okay? And what you can do is you can actually adjust the position of the layer by left clicking, dragging above. So if you want red at the bottom, you can do it. If you want red at the top, you left click and you drag it up. That is important because what that allows us to do is it allows us to define what order something is gonna be processed. So let's say in this case, we are gonna do the engrave first. So we wanna engrave and then we wanna score. We have it this way. But in this case, I actually wanna score it first, okay? Just to demonstrate to you. So we're gonna move the green layer at the top. And then what we're gonna do is, if you come to the bottom right here in the processing tab, there is an arrow next to it. By default, you will have it set to auto planning, okay? That means it's automatically gonna define what order it does things in. It might not be the order you want, so click on the arrow and select user defining, and then you're gonna see the option here by layer. If you click that on, that will now engrave or process your actions in the order of your layers. It will go from the top layer, then the next layer below it, and the next layer below that. So in our case, it's gonna do the green layer first, then it's gonna do the red layer. And if we go to process here, and we actually get it to show us the engraving path and click play, you will see it is going to score around first like we want it to. So let's watch it do that. And then it's gonna start filling it in with the actual engraving right there. I'll speed it forward. So that is both processes in one session and that speeds up time and workflows, very valuable. That's a really, really good way of doing it. You can also do it in the sense of cutting as well. So if we have a rectangle around that, let's say you have a piece of plywood and you wanna do an engraving and then cut it out. Well, we can do that as well, okay? What we can do is put that over the top of it, give it its own layer again, we'll go blue in this case, set it to cut, and at the moment, based on what we've just been through, it's gonna cut first and then engrave. We don't want that to do that because ultimately, we want it to engrave first while it's a solid piece of material and then cut it out. And we could even add a circular um, hole in there. And what I'll do is set that green. So that circular hole is gonna be like a little keychain cut out if you wanna do that. And we will do that to engrave, as, uh, to cut as well. And I know these, these settings aren't actual good settings that I would use, I'm just giving you a demonstration. It might be that because we're doing long sweeping cuts, we want the cut settings for the outside of it to be different to the settings for the quick circle. And this allows us basically to do that. But we can expand on this even further and get even more organized, and that is by renaming our layers. So if you right click on your layer, over on the left side here and click rename. You can call it engrave layer, for example. We can do the blue layer and rename that to outline cut. And I can then rename the green layer and call it, um, I'll call it keychain cut in this case. So we now know just from quickly looking and referring exactly what each layer represents. This is a simplified design. It isn't that complex, so we could probably tell that anyway. However, it's not always the case and this really allows you to control it and just have a controlled project. You might be repeat engraving things, so having control and having organization is very important. So what we can do now is we can drag the engrave layer above it, then we can put the keychain cut layer as a second process because we don't want it to do that. and We don't want it to cut the whole thing out and then do the keychain cut out. 
we want the keychain cut out first because we want the, the material to stay where it is. So let's go back down to our process and just to reiterate to you, we have the by layer selection on, we have user defining processing path, which allows us to do that. If we then go to the process and view our plan again, we can see it's gonna do our engraving first, which is what we want. It's then gonna do our circular keychain cutout, which is a different set of cutting parameters. And then finally, it's gonna do our actual cut of the whole thing. That allows you to do everything in one process, which is great because you don't have to manually adjust things. And as you can see, that is a really good, quick way of doing it. And it's a really useful way of, an effective way of controlling layers to your advantage. So the final use I'm gonna show you is for, in this case, I'm gonna show you, if you were embossing a coin, for example, and you wanted to emboss the coin first, and then you wanted to do a nice clean pass, because you probably hear people mention clean pass all the time. A cleaning pass is basically a less powered, sped up pass that just takes a layer of the top material off to shine things up a bit without actually damaging an engraving. So let's say you have a depth map that you wanna be able to emboss onto a, a bronze coin or a brass coin, sorry. Well, you can put it in there and I'm not gonna tidy this up. Obviously I would normally cut around the black background and um, show you how to do it. But in this case, I actually just wanna show you where this is useful to you, okay? So let's say our coin is central on our design and we set some random embossing settings. So to emboss, obviously I know you, you would go into here and you'd change it to embossing and we could do that actually in this case. And I will set it to brass coin just, just to make it as representative as possible. So there you go, we have our brass coin, we have our settings for it. We wanna select that as a, we'll, we'll make it a blue layer and we're gonna rename it to embossed coin. Okay, so that has now snapshotted those settings, okay? And what we might also wanna do is do a cleaning pass after it. So what we would do is draw a circle around it. And as I've said to you, what you would want to do is make sure this circle is exactly the same size as the item it's going over. It is in this case. We would select engrave and we would change that one to process on flat surface. And I might just do like a, and this is me, don't use these settings by the way, this is just me showing you how you can use it. That might be my, they, they might be my cleaning pass settings, okay? So I can right click on that and select green, and then I will set, save it as um, cleaning pass. Now, what you can do is drag the cleaning pass below the embossed coin pass, and then you have got both processes in it again. So it's gonna emboss the coin, and as soon as it's done, it's gonna clean it. And what we'll do again to make sure that works is we will go on here, select user defining and select by layer. That will then allow us to process the item and view our path again. And you'll see, this is gonna be a long thing. It will do the depth map first and then it will do our cleaning pass. And that is perfect. Once again, it just gives you multiple ways of achieving the same thing, but in a more optimized manner. So there you go. Hopefully that is really beneficial. That's layers 101. Like I said, if, if you know a better way to use layers or you know a different way to optimize them, mention it in the comments below. I've got loads of other tutorials, so check out the channel if you're interested in learning more. Please like and subscribe if it's been useful to you. And thank you for watching and have a great day.